Ladies and gentlemen, look, I did a thing because I wanted to do a thing and I had an opportunity to do the thing, so I did the thing. I got another car. And look, I know I, we just got the vet. We introduced it to the channel. We haven't touched the vet. The vet's been sitting. But I got a GX100 not too long ago. You guys saw us start to build that car and do some things to it. Well, I kind of... I kind of got a JZX100. So you're probably thinking, like, why would you buy another car? Well, if you're unfamiliar with the X100 chassis, they come in a couple different options. The one that we got is a GX100, and this one is a JZX100. On top of it, it's the Tour V, which means that it came factory with the JZ engine, where the old Chaser came with the G engine, so it's a GX100 Chaser Avante. This is a JZX100 Chaser Tour V. So that's how I came across this car. My buddy Dustin English and his brother Damon English both own JZX 100s. Technically, actually, Damon's was a GX 100. And I got into the market because I wanted to build a ride along car where I can take you guys when I see you at the track for rides and essentially turn it into a way to make like some side income. So I went down to Texas to go visit my mom and it just so happens that there was a knuckle up event happening that weekend. And so me and my boy John uh, Putano hopped in to uh, his IS300, we drove down to Speed Sports Park and there was a knuckle up event and I got to see Damon and Dustin both driving their chasers together. And I just fell in love with Damon's chaser. I love the silver one. Um, and then also Dustin's car as well. I just love the chaser platform period. But I was interested in buying the car and Damon, I hate you. Just let me preface this video with that, Damon. I hate you. I was supposed to buy Damon's car uh, for a pretty good price. Uh, it had no roll cage, so I was able to start from scratch, but it already had all these other things done. And Damon had done really well with the chassis harness and taking it and doing Deutsch connectors and doing a bunch of mil spec stuff on it. And it was a very, very beautiful car. Well, Damon ended up selling it just before I can get a hold of it. Um, and so my next option was to buy Dustin's car. Dustin's car is a little bit more pricey, but it's got a few more goods on it. The only issue is that it came with a roll cage, which for most people, it wouldn't be an issue. But for us and our purpose of building a ride along car, that's kind of a problem. But no need to worry, proper fabric's gonna help me out. We already looked at the cage and ran through it and it's gonna work. We're gonna build a sick ride along car. Anyways, I hit up uh, Dustin. We came to an agreement on a price and now lo and behold, I have a car, JZX100 Chaser. Also, the night, the day that I, it was pretty crazy because Dustin is in Texas and I am in California and it just so happened that Kegel Johnson, who used to work with Forsberg and has worked with a bunch of big names in the industry and drifting, he was moving uh, a truck and a trailer that was empty from Houston to California, so, or from uh, Dallas to California and, and Dustin's in Dallas. So, Kegel picked the car up. I paid for it on a Wednesday. Kegel picked it up on a Wednesday night, on that Wednesday night, and had it to me Thursday night. And it was like the sickest thing ever. The guy ripped, killed it. Car was strapped down, all clean. Everything was beautiful. So, shout out to Kegel as well. Appreciate you, bro. Amazon Prime shipping is crazy. Next day is crazy on a JZX, but we got it. So let's run through it. We'll start with uh, probably the least important part of the car as far as what you guys are probably into if you're like me, the interior. So specifically, this car was Rich Whiteman's Pro-Am car. So all of you guys who are gonna be asking, isn't that Rich's old car? It sure is. So the car went from Rich over at Freedom uh, Motorsports, they had this whole thing put together. Um, and then Rich went and did Pro-Am in this chassis, won his Formula Drift license, built a new chaser, which was an animal in FD. Um, and then he sold this car to Dustin. Dustin took the car and started doing kind of just minor upgrades and changed just a few things in it. Nothing super crazy. Uh, but just enough to make it like just dialed. So when it came to the interior, it already had the roll cage in it. And again, we're gonna plan is to essentially cut out the C pillar and the, the mid stay that's back there and redo the back half of the cage and put some seats back there or build some type of seating. 
again for you guys to come with ride alongs with me but also when i got the car dustin wanted to keep his seats uh, and his steering wheel which i was like that's fine no big deal i have seats at the house so i've had these status seats sitting and they were originally for the gx 100 my other chaser um but the car just never had any power or anything like that so i just mostly left the interior on that car stock minus a steering wheel so luckily i had these seats laying around and i got four of them done and so as soon as the car got here that night, Anthony came over, threw the seats in, threw a steering wheel in it, and it was pretty much ready to roll. Dustin just came back from uh, final bout. So the car was all prepped and everything, and it did good at final bout. He did pop the transmission, but he swapped in a new transmission before he sent it out to me. And so I already drove it and I love it. And there's a bunch of stuff that I'm gonna change, um, but the car is actually a blast. Like I was very, very surprised at a few things and you'll have to wait until that video to hear what things were kind of weird, what things were cool, uh, what I liked and what I didn't like. But for the most part, the interior, they left stock. Most of the interior is still in it. They got the carpet center console. Dustin did these really cool yellow uh, boots, which I'll probably end up getting rid of uh, and going black because I just like the idea of the, of the stock dash, the stock center console, the carpet. It still feels like a street car, but it makes a little bit more power than your typical street car. So one of the big things about the JZX100 chassis is that it has this giant freaking dump truck of a rear end. That was pretty aggressive. But it has a giant freaking trunk on it. It's pretty rad. The cool thing about this particular car is that I'm not sure if Rich did it or Dustin did it, but the car is back half. So just like the pro car, all of this is cut out and the metal is only forward and the rest of this back here is all fiberglass. So there's a sick bash bar under there, um, stock fuel tank, so nothing crazy. We might jump over to a radium just to kind of move some things around depending on the back seats that we want to put in it. We might be able to cut up the rear firewall and make some adjustments, but we'll have to move that gas tank. Um, also, the super sick thing is IS300 welded diff already in it. IS300 axles under there as well, along with a bunch of FDF arms in the rear end, which is perfect because you guys know we work with FDF. Most of the body kit is BN, so it's the same exact over that we have on the GX100 here, but then it's got the BN uh, side skirts, front fenders, and front bumper, which is off the car because it needs some love. But the body is pretty rad. I think this is pretty cool. Check this out. This car squats so hard that the rear tire actually has rubbed a hole in the over fender, the fender area. So, I don't know, I thought that was pretty sick. Pretty dope. She squats super hard, which uh, there's some suspension adjustments that need to be made. Another thing is the car's on Fortune Auto, we're on BC, so we're gonna have to get those swapped out. And then when you get to the front end of the car, he's got a bunch of angle kit stuff. He did a modded front knuckle and an extended arm, I believe, um, with a couple of other small goodies. All of that stuff we're gonna be removing because again, we're throwing the FDF stuff on the car. So we'll be taking this, slapping it on the GX100, taking the FDF kit, and throwing it onto here. And then also um, a hood that's all vented. I'm not sure exactly whose hood it is. It might be a BN hood, it might not be, but I love it. It looks super aggressive. The profile of the nose is beautiful. And then if I got the body kit that I wanted, which would be a Kazama kit, it just makes the front end look so aggressive. To be honest, I think that I'm so in love with the way that this car looks because it looks like an E46. Like the front end looks like an E46. This is very similar in headlight shape, very similar in corner light. Um, the amount of car that's from the dash to the front bumper is also very similar. So overall, it's like a JDM E46. The big difference is the power plant that's in this thing. Let's pop the hood. So this is where the goods are. This is where the value of the car really is, um, along with it being a chaser, but the freaking 1J. There's a bit of a difference between the 1JZ that's in the 36 and the 1JZ that's here in the Chaser, and it's the VVTi. 1J that's in the 36 is a non-VVTi, which means it doesn't have any variable valve timing. No variable valve timing adjustments, which means that the bottom end doesn't have a lot of torque, where typically the VVTi stuff has a better bottom end. 1J, VVTi, he's done a bunch of stuff to it. We have the Audi R8, I believe, coil packs already on it. It's got the billet valve covers, um, upgraded injectors, everything's clean, a bunch of little 
uh, English tune stuff like the throttle cable bracket. Although it's small and minute, it makes such a big difference when you're working on stuff. The other thing is that he's got a Gen 1 Garrett turbo on it. It's a 30, 70 or 70, 30, I think. I can't remember. I'm not a turbo guy. I'm not even gonna act like I know what it is. He said as a Garrett, he told me all the numbers and I was like, sounds dope, dude. Uh, but it rips, dude. Like the power band is actually really good on it. Um, another thing is catch cans. Who needs them? We don't want them. They ran these two big old fat fittings right here from the valve covers off into the entrance of the turbo, or you could say the uh, inlet of the turbo. And so now any type of crankcase pressure or any type of uh, really overflow or oil just kind of gets sucked through the turbo and it could be for better or for worse. I don't know everybody's gonna have an opinion on it. Personally, I love the way that this is set up. It's super clean. They did all this beautiful stuff, banjo bolt on the blow off valve, the Wiggins clamps on the intake here. Like all this stuff is just really freaking nice, dude. Like, I don't know how to get around it. Kill switch is beautiful. And then not to mention, it's already got the Optima red top battery in it, which we'll probably be upgrading to a yellow top um, just because these are typically for like older hot rod style vehicles where a yellow top would be able to handle all the electronics in this no problem, which he's been running this battery in here forever. So it's probably fine. We'll probably do an upgrade there. But big old fat front mount intercooler, coil rad, radiator, uh, oil coolers on it, chase bays, upgrades on it, uh, the overflow tank for the radiator. Dude, it's just sick. And then he's got an upgraded transmission in it too. So it's not a Jay-Z X100 transmission, it's a 110 transmission, which I've heard is better. Uh, how exactly, I don't know. I actually forgot to mention when we looked at the interior, is that the car also comes equipped with fire suppression already. So we'll have to relocate the bottle because it's, it's right behind the driver's seat and we're gonna need the space for feet. But the car's already plumbed for fire suppression. There's so much stuff that's just done to it. And this was the plan with the GX100. This was the plan with my original chaser. But before you know it, you know you got 4,000 for the motor by itself. And then you're looking at like maybe another 28 to 3,000 for the transmission. And so you're already up at like 7,000. Then you gotta figure out the turbo, then you gotta do the manifold, then you gotta do the intercooler. Then by the time I got done with getting the GX100 to this position, like, yeah, it was cheaper to just buy this. And so I got a pretty good deal on it and I'm not gonna disclose it for the sake of Dustin maybe not wanting me to share it. One of the biggest things for me with the rally car that made it so much fun was that it was a whole new challenge. All wheel drive, dirt surfaces, uh, turbo little four cylinder, all those things made the rally car make driving exciting for me again. And specifically speaking about the chaser, the new challenge is right hand drive, which I've only driven twice before this. Also a one JZ with a turbo, which means that the power band is now moved up. It's not this V8 where I have all the bottom end in the world. Those couple of things have really like gotten me excited to drive this car. So we already filmed the driving video. Uh, we already went to the track and I was telling John, how do we tell the people we went to the track without ruining the videos and the surprises? But listen, stay tuned because next week we're going to the track and you're gonna be able to hear this thing. And just, just because I love you and because John loves you really, Here's a quick little montage of some driving. We not afraid, we put the fear in their bones. Ain't no more running away. They try to 